brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. We have seen the modernists mangle scripture. They do it under the guise of critical scholarship, critical theology. They make many claims that the Gospels were not written by those whose names they bear. They reject what the church has said under magisterial authority about the reality of Scripture. They say that some things are merely parables, things that the church never said were parables. They say that some things are symbolic, some going so far as to say that the resurrection itself was symbolic, a resurrection in the hearts of the faithful of the apostles who shared their personal experiences with one another and then were lit on, had their faith lit on fire so they could then preach the gospel. We have seen them say that St. Paul was wrong and then gave his, what they called historical and cultural contextual reasons for such. They deny the inerrancy of sacred scripture. This is a classic approach they take. Beyond that, they completely rewrite history as well. They give us uh, fake accounts of deaconesses in ancient history. They take the writing of one church father and claim that that one church father's advocacy for communion in the hand is proof that it was a widespread practice when even a cursory look at the writings of other church fathers sees the, most of the rest of the church fathers condemning the practice. This is their method. They reject scripture, they reject history, and they do it to promote their personal agenda. That is also the warning of Pope St. Pius X in this week's short segment from Pescendi Dominici Gregis, his 1907 landmark encyclical condemning the errors of the modernists. An encyclical letter largely forgotten outside of traditional circles. The document itself is fairly dense, so we decided here to cover it about once every two weeks in short segments. I was inspired for this by something Kennedy Hall said almost a year ago on his YouTube channel when talking about how there's not enough attention given to Pashendi. So I thought I would take care of this. I would take his challenge, essentially, and present it to you here in easy-to-digest sections. So here's Pope St. Pius X talking about the effect modernists have on Scripture. The result of this dismembering of the sacred books and this partition of them throughout the centuries is naturally that the scriptures can no longer be attributed to the authors whose names they bear. The modernists have no hesitation in affirming commonly that these books, and especially the Pentateuch and the first three Gospels, have been gradually formed by additions to a primitive brief narration by interpolations of theological or allegorical interpretation, by transitions, by joining different passages together. This means briefly that in the sacred books we must admit a vital evolution, springing from and corresponding with evolution of faith. The traces of this evolution, they tell us, are so visible in the books that one might almost write a history of them. Indeed, this history they do actually write, and with such an easy security that one might believe them to have with their own eyes seen the writers at work through the ages amplifying the sacred books. To aid them in this, they call to their assistance that branch of criticism which they call textual, and labor to show that such a fact or such a phrase is not in its right place, and adducing other arguments of the same kind. They seem, in fact, to have constructed for themselves certain types of narration and discourses, upon which they base their decision as to whether a thing is out of place or not. Judge, if you can, how men with such a system are fitted for practicing this kind of criticism. To hear them talk about their works on the sacred books, in which they have been able to discover so much that is defective, one would imagine that before them nobody ever even glanced the pages of scripture, whereas the truth is that a whole multitude of doctors, infinitely superior to them in genius, in erudition, in sanctity, have sifted the sacred books in every way, and so far from finding imperfections in them, have thanked God more and more the deeper they have gone into them, for his divine bounty in having vouchsafed to speak thus to men. Unfortunately, these great doctors did not enjoy the same aids to study that are possessed by the modernists for their guide and rule, 
a philosophy borrowed from the negation of God, and a criterion which consists of themselves. We believe, then, that we have set forth with sufficient clearness the historical method of the modernists. The philosopher leads the way, the historian follows, and then in due order come internal and textual criticism. And since it is characteristic of the first cause to communicate its virtue to secondary causes, it is quite clear that the criticism we are concerned with is agnostic, immanentist, and evolutionist criticism. Hence, anybody who embraces it and employs it makes profession thereby of the errors contained in it and places himself in opposition to the Catholic faith. This being so, one cannot but greatly be surprised by the consideration which is attached to it by certain Catholics. Two causes may be assigned for this. First, the close alliance, independent of all differences of nationality or religion, which the historians and critics of the school have formed among themselves. Second, the boundless effrontery of these men. Let one of them but open his mouth and the others applaud him in chorus, proclaiming that science has made another step forward. Let an outsider but hint at a desire to inspect the new discovery with his own eyes, and they are on him in a body. Deny it, and you are an ignoramus. Embrace it and defend it, and there is no praise too warm for you. In this way they win over any who, did they but realize what they were doing, would shrink, who would shrink back with horror. The imprudence and the domineering of some, and the thoughtlessness and imprudence of others, have combined to generate a pestilence in the air, which penetrates everywhere and spreads the contagion. But let us pass to the apologist. Perhaps the most pernicious of all of their errors is the effect modernists have on Scripture. In so doing, Catholics rightly place sacred Scripture as a one of the magister, one of the authorities on the faith. Not the only authority, that's what separates us from Protestants, but as a serious authority. After all, if we can point to something said in Scripture, there's a very, very highly likely chance that the Church's magisterial authority will coincide with what is said in Scripture and then explain it for us in even greater detail. And so when we encounter Scripture, we take it very seriously. But what the modernists do is they take Scripture, change its interpretation to promote their evil programs. And then, of course, they are aided in this by the work of priests and their bishops and others. Bishops who, some of them otherwise very good, who have denied that Adam and Eve were real, which then destroys the entire basis of original sin, makes it a harder thing to defend the concept of original sin. And once original sin is destroyed as a concept, so goes the rest of the faith. But modernists have this way with scripture. They do this very often. James Martin, for instance, says that the uh, sin that we associate with him, that I have dubbed the James Martin sin in honor of his diabolical work, he has said that St. Paul was wrong. At least he's honest. He doesn't try to say that St. Paul justified things, or that St. Paul wasn't really talking about what he was talking about in the various places in his letters where he talked about that sin in particular. James Martin will just say that he was wrong. While then going and saying that in the Old Testament, the accounts of those several cities that God destroyed because of the prevalence of that sin were about really the lack of hospitality, or that the locals were maybe going to uh, force themselves in such a way onto their guests, who happened to be angels, but always leaving out the particular inclination at the core of this, which is what the church had always taught. They changed the meaning of scripture. They changed the meaning of the church's teaching by annihilating scripture, thus reducing it to little more than a particularly progressive version of what Protestants preach. And this is why many have said, rightly, that modernism is just Protestantism. St. Pius X himself declared it to be the synthesis of all heresies. All heresies. Go back to the ancient world. You see the prototype versions of many of these heresies that we hear from prelates of the church themselves in scripture. You hear from them using scripture as their basis, a claim, repeating claims about the Eucharist and things that Protestants make, because it's the synthesis of all heresies. I hope today that Pope St. Pius X made that a little more obvious for you. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. And hit like and subscribe. If you haven't, it does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.